in After Effects. So a dust reveal or a text to sand transition or whatever you want to call it. And we won't need any plugins for this. We can do it with the CC Particle Systems 2 effect. And with a bit of tweaking, you can get a variety of looks. You can do sparks or fairy dust. And you can make it so that the text disintegrates and blows away. Or you can make it so that the dust actually reveals the text. And this is just one of 200 text effects that I made for a product called Creation Title Effects, which is a very useful tool for any After Effects user because it's full of all of these different styles for text. And the styles cover every theme, so you'll always have really nice looking text for all of your projects. And the 200 text effects are each on their own text layer, so you can just click on it to edit the text, and you can easily change the font, and you can customize all of the effects with slider controls on each layer. So it'll be a big time saver for you if you ever use text in After Effects, and uh, you can check it out. It's at creationeffects.com, and it's called Creation Title Effects, and there's a link in the description. So onto the tutorial, I'm going to be putting in a lot of settings and a few expressions, and I recommend that you just copy as I do. Um, use the same settings and then when you're all done you can go back and tweak the settings to get whatever look that you're after. Uh, first thing I want to do is add some text. So I'll use my text tool. I'm going to type in creation effects. And I'm going to duplicate this layer. And the top one will be just the particles and the bottom one will be the plain text. So I'll select the top one and I'll add my particle effect. I'm going to use CC Particle Systems 2. And you can see we've got a problem with the particles getting cut off at the edge of the layer. Um, and there's an effect that can fix that. It's called CC Composite. And we want to put that before the particle effect. And you can see that expanded the alpha channel and now we can see the particles. I'm going to open up some of these sections here so we can see all of the properties. And the first thing we want to do here is check the source alpha inheritance. And that'll make it so that the particles are only emitted from the letters. And you can see if I move the producer around, it fades and then gets bright as we go over the letters. And we can actually tighten that up a little bit um, by decreasing the radius x to 1. The radius is how wide our particle emitter is. Um, so we can be very narrow width-wise. And then height-wise, we want it to be at least as high as these letters. So for the radius Y, I'm going to put in 13. Um, depending on the height of your letters, it might be different from that. And then we want to animate the producer to go from one side to the, to the other side. So I'll just put it over here at the edge of the frame. I'll type in 0 and make sure it's in the middle of our layer vertically. And go to the first frame and add my keyframe at the position property here. And then go forward about a second and a half or however long you want your transition to last. And I'll type in 1920, which is the, the width of my comp. I'll hit the U key and you can see um, the two keyframes that created. And if you scrub through, you can see the particles exploding off of the letters. We're going to need more particles than that, so I'm going to change the birth rate to 50. And the longevity, which is how long those particles will live before they fade away, uh, we'll set that to 4 seconds. And I'll change the animation preset uh, to direction normalized. The velocity is how fast these particles will explode off of those letters. And this is a very sensitive control, so we can use a small number. I'm going to put in 0 0.3. Inherit velocity will make the particles move with the particle producer. So they inherit uh, the momentum of that producer as it moves across. Um, we can set that to 40%. Gravity, uh, you can see that the particles are falling down. Um, that's because gravity is set to a positive number. But if we make it negative 0.3, um, the particles will float upward. Resistance, um, that's how much the particles will slow down after that initial burst off of the letters. And we can set that to about 20. Direction, we can leave alone. Extra, um, that makes the particles spread out a little bit and add some randomness. 
I'll set that to two. Particle type, we can keep that at line, but you can experiment with different ones if you want. Maximum opacity is set to 75%, which is too bright uh, for me, so I'm going to put this at like 22%. And for the color, I'm just going to sample the color of the text for both the birth color and the death color. And uh, I'll make the death color a little darker. Okay, let's have a look and see what we got. Okay, uh, you can see some awesomeness starting to manifest here. Um, it's a little too orderly for me. I want to add some, some more randomness to it. And we can do that with uh, a simple expression on each of these properties. And it's the wiggle expression. If you don't know about the wiggle expression, it's I'd say it's the king of all expressions. And if you only learn one expression, it should be the wiggle expression. Um, it's really simple. I'll start by adding it to the radius X. Just Alt or Option click this stopwatch icon. And it opens up an expression box here. I'll type in wiggle. And in parentheses, I'll do 10 comma 1. <clears throat> so what this does, uh, it makes this value fluctuate um, 10 times a second, it'll fluctuate randomly by an amount of one. And that'll make it much more random and organic and just more realistic. And we can actually just copy this expression and use it on all of these other properties. Just copy and paste. The only thing that'll change is the second value. You can experiment with different amounts, but I think um, about uh, three quarters of whatever this value is set to, uh, you can use for your second value in the expression. So uh, the radius y is set to 13, so I'll change the fluctuation amount to about 10. And then you can just go down and do that for all of these properties. And you can even add a wiggle expression to the color properties here. But when you use a numeric value on this property, it's going to be very sensitive. And you can see we've got kind of this party going on with our particles using all these different colors. Um, and that's because we have it set to 1. So we want to use a very small number, like 0.1. I'm colorblind and I can't really see much difference there, but I'm just going to assume that it's that it's there, which is the story of my life. You colorblind people understand. I'll do the same thing for the death color. And okay, let's play it back. Okay, you can see uh, we've got some clumps of particles here, which I don't really like. That's the velocity property. And if we go back to velocity, um, we should be able to just lower this fluctuation amount. Let's try 0 0.2. And you can see that spread them out a little bit. I think that's better. So you can see we've got some particles floating at different speeds, um, going different directions. Uh, so that's a little better. It's still not quite enough randomness for me. Um, I like to add one more effect. Uh, it's my favorite effect. It's called Turbulent Displace. And let me change the evolution and you can see what it does. So you can see it, it's warping it. And uh, what it's going to look like is uh, that all these particles will be twirling and swirling and dirling and girling and flirling. Uh, in the wind. So we just need to make some changes to these settings first. Uh, size, we can leave it at 100. Amount, we'll make that 35. Um, complexity can be 1.5. And the evolution, we want that to just keep changing continuously. Um, you could use keyframes. I'll just uh, add an expression. Time times 120. So every second, it'll add 120 to the value. 
And what we can also do is move the turbulence so that it moves upward with the particles. So the evolution will keep changing, but the, the turbulence, that distortion mesh, will be moving upward with the particles as they float up. Um, and that's the offset turbulence property here. And we can make that move up with the particles with an expression. Um, first, I want to see how fast these particles are moving. So at I, we can just estimate that it takes about two seconds for these particles to move to the top of the screen. Um, so I'll add an expression value minus opening bracket zero comma time times 300 and close the bracket. And that's kind of just like our other expression. Sorry, typo. So it's like that this expression, it just makes um, one value, this uh, y value will continuously increase, which will move the turbulence upward in this direction. And one other thing we want to add to this turbulent displace is a very simple expression on the random seed. Random seed just randomizes uh, the distortion with each new value that you put in here. I'm just going to set this to index. And index is this, the layer number. So now, as we duplicate this layer, and I'll tell you why we'll do that in a second, the warp will produce random results on each layer. Let me duplicate it three times. So now, with each layer, we've got different warp results and different um, wiggle results, because the wiggle expression is going to yield different results on each of these values um, with each new layer. So what that does is it adds multiple layers of particles, and they'll each be going different directions, and it's just going to add depth and realism to it, um, and also make it a little brighter so we can see the particles better. So let's have a look at what we got. So that's looking pretty good. We're almost done here. Um, we still have to animate uh, the text to reveal itself with the particles. Um, so you can see these top layers are just the particles, and the bottom layer, when I isolate it, is just the text. Um, so we can reveal the text with a linear wipe effect. And set the feather to about 50. And then all we have to do is animate the transition completion. And I'm going to reveal the keyframes for one of these top layers, and we can use these as a guide. So I'll go to that first keyframe and uh, add a transition completion keyframe at zero, and then go forward, and then go forward to that second keyframe we made and add a new keyframe here at 100%. And if we go through, it looks like there's a little bit of a gap between particles and the text becoming visible. So I'm just going to grab these and slide them over one frame and wrong direction, sorry. I had a 50-50 shot. Okay, so that looks a little better because you don't want the, the letters to disappear too soon. Um, one more thing I would do is add a sand texture to the particles, especially areas like this that are just a solid color. Um, they could benefit from a sand texture. So you could use uh, a photo if you want. I'm just, I'll just make one really quick. I'll add a new solid layer. We'll call it sand texture. And I'll add a fractal noise or a turbulent noise effect. And I'll lower the scale all the way to 1 and increase the contrast a bit. Uh, that should work. Um, in order for this to work, we have to pre-compose this layer. So with the layer selected, I'll go to Layer, Pre-compose, and Move All Attributes into the new composition. And we'll close that pre-comp that opened up. 
So now it's it's in here, it's in its own pre-comp, and uh, we actually don't need to see it, so you can just turn it off. And now uh, we can add a texturize effect to these particle layers. And we want to set the texture layer to the sand texture that we just made. And you can see now it added a little sand texture. Um, whoops, I've got two texturize effects here. I'll delete one. Um, we'll just copy that and put it on these other layers as well. Maybe um, in back in my sand texture comp, I'll change the evolution so that it changes. Uh, we'll make it so that it changes randomly on every frame with an expression random, and then in parentheses, a thousand. So now it's like noise. And I almost forgot, um, you might want to experiment with different blending modes. I'll change this top layer to screen, or maybe add. I think that'll look better. Lower the opacity of that a little bit. So there you have it. Uh, see, we don't need no stinking plugins. And uh, you can go back and change those settings if you want and experiment with the, the wiggle expressions or um, maybe with different particle types and see what you can make. And one other thing I should mention is that you don't have to use text for this. Any layer with an alpha channel uh, will work. So you can use an image um, if you want to create maybe some really nice text in Photoshop. Or again,